In this next folder, I'm going to quickly cover several scorecard views here. First of all, why do I call these scorecard views? It's uh, because of the uh, information which uh, is uh, presented in the view. Now this is uh, the actual scorecard information here. I'm going to include accumulation. But um, these are the fields which I, I consider the scorecard. But uh, in a way, I consider every field that's in these views a scorecard because there's a pertinent information about the stock. Now, this is the uh, end of day view, which is number one right here. Uh, but uh, when I look at this, I can tell exactly what I want to know before I look at the chart. Uh, for example, on uh, Lulu, I can see that it has a B accumulation. Its EPS rank is strong at uh, 96. Its RS rank is strong at 92. The group rank is uh, um, mediocre, I would say, but I still have an ERG of 231. This O score is consecutive quarters of uh, earnings and revenue growth. I don't use this much anymore. I primarily concentrate on this information. And since I'm uh, focused on volume price analysis, I uh, uh, really pay a lot of attention over here. The last VPA signal and the VPA signal prior to that, if there was one the day before. This is the days since the uh, VPA signal. So anything with a zero would, means that it happened that day. This is the volume point of control, which I'll talk about uh, later. And if it's green, that means uh, the bulls are really in charge of the volume at this point. And that happened six days ago. Zero is always the day of the event, and then you count up from there. Uh, this is a box stock. In other words, it's a uh, stock that has consecutive earnings growth. So there's a lot of information right here. Uh, this is the range the volume for the day, and this was at the close yesterday. And uh, you can see the uh, symbol, the earnings due, the projected uh, uh, current quarter, last close, last close net change, and the percentage price change, and so on. So that is all scorecard information, and that's where uh, I, uh, I derived the name. Now much of this information, and let me go back up to the top, Sort on raw combo. I'll bring a chart of Lulu up. This information right here is also the scorecard. You can see that many of the fields are duplicated. Plus, we have more information here because we have the revenue over the last eight quarters. And uh, we also have the earnings for the last eight quarters and the amount of growth or lack of growth. This little chart here shows you quarterly. Uh, if the earnings and revenue rose and when it came down, you'll see this on a lot of retail stocks that are seasonal. It just kind of bounces all over the place. But here is, you can see it says scorecard here, and these are the primary fields, uh, most of which match what's in the warehouse view. Of course, the warehouse view is uh, much more flexible because I can take any field which is available and put it into a view and arrange them however I want to. Now, notice uh, the industry column is right here. Very important because uh, with uh, the top-down approach to uh, market analysis and prospecting, uh, obviously we need to know the industry groups, sectors, and so on. So let's just quickly run through these, uh, or I'll quickly run through these scorecard views. I do want to show you one thing. Uh, remember that the... Uh, uh, Combo rank is attached to the view. If I disengage uh, this, uh, c here's the combo. And if I disengage this, these stocks will not move from their current position when I go down to stocks intraday. So this is as of last night. But when I go to stocks intraday, the combo remains the same, the last night's combo. So I can quickly see which of these stocks, which were up strongly at the end of the day, 
uh, yesterday are continuing to move up. Now, if I engage the combo on the stocks intraday, it's going to give me a current reading of the strength of these stocks based upon that combo. I'm going to go back to stocks end of the day. I'm just going to quickly show you the end of day combo, which I use uh, on most of my views uh, on the bullish side. It's looking for a strong move percentage wise with heavy volume and uh, the range near the top. And uh, I'm also looking for the uh, a volume point of control to be positive and then these other fields have less weight. So it's a very technical combo. And that is my end of day combo. Let me do that one more time. I'm going to disengage this. This combo, the end of day combo will remain in place but I'm going to go to my intraday view and I can see which of these stocks which were ex extremely strong yesterday are holding up today and you can see that Lulu is up uh, another uh, uh, f uh, right here 2.12% sorry and then when I engage the current combo Lulu drops all the way down to number 531 so as you can see The combo rank has a tremendous effect upon what is occurring in the view. I'm just going to click on, uh, let's find Lulu. And you can see it dropped down all the way down to number 531 out of 3318. So, um, big difference. That means there are 530 stocks above it as of. 124 p.m. on Friday the 11th that fit the combo better than Lulu does. Now I'm going to quickly run through the rest of these now that you know what I'm doing with these scorecard views. Uh, number I was just on 1A. 1B is uh, the scorecard with stocks under $5 end of day. There are 1149 of these. Now this includes IPOs too. Intraday, you can see 1149, same filter, and uh, these are the stocks that are under $5. Here's the price. You can see some of these are very, very inexpensive. Let's take a look at uh, one that uh, is close to $5 here. And uh, I'll bring this down. You can see it's up 11.14%, trading at 100% of its daily range and uh, the volume is running well above normal. It only trades 40,000 shares. So you can see in this scorecard view there's a lot of information right here. Do I want to mess with a stock that's trading 40,000 shares? Probably not. This, uh, this volume is a 50-day. I'm using the 90-day. Why am I using a 90-day? Because the VPA flags are all based upon the 90-day. Okay, moving on. Uh, this, uh, okay, the, these two end of day and intraday, uh, this is just the opposite. These are much more liquid stocks. End of day, $5 and up trading at least a half a million shares based upon the 90-day moving average. That cuts it down to 1,522 stocks. Here's the intraday version of that. You can see that Rite Aid Corporation is on top because it is the best fit for the combo ranking. I'll bring this chart up quickly. And you can see that uh, this stock is on the move. I'll zoom out. Had a nice move up, came back down, formed a higher low, tried to break out, was rejected. You can see that there are some nice VPA flags here, effort to rise. It's on the move again, and it's moving up with the group, or with its group. Now remember, these stocks are sorted with the effort versus the results. So if I were to go to the other end of this down here, you can see that uh, these stocks are going down. They're going the opposite direction. So this is a bullish 
combo rank. Okay, this is just uh, closed in funds. Uh, somebody, one of the customers wanted closed in funds. Uh, that's why this is in here. Uh, these are names that you're usually not familiar with, but uh, just considered closed in funds. And you can uh, look at the intraday version. You can see a lot of these are moved. China fund, not surprising, is moving up today. Uh, number six here, every day uh, for the Insider Club, I uh, uh, put the uh, stocks in that are going to report that day. Most of the time, this information's uh, very accurate. Sometimes it's off, but uh, anyway, I include that in my uh, uh, add-on that goes out every day to uh, Insider Club members. Now, let's move on down here quickly. And uh, these are scorecard views with bullish VPA flags today. If you look over here to the right, you can see effort to rise uh, and test for supply at bar closing near the high and so on. There's a zero along here. That means these signals happen today. Now, if I go to the intraday version, you can see that uh, all of these had a VPA flag today. Here's that Riata Pharma, Bed Bath & Beyond, which uh, got a new CEO yesterday. That's up. Uh, Freeport McMoran. All of these had a VPA flag. Now, some of these are transfer of ownership, ownership flags. That's problematic because you don't know which way these stocks are going to go. So I put it in the screens for both the bullish and the bearish side. Let's bring up uh, this one. You can see... Right here with this circle, it indicates transfer of ownership. What that means is there are buyers, and by the end of the day, a lot of the buyers uh, took profits and drove the price down. But you can see that it came or opened strongly. It gapped up, and it's uh, at near the uh, top of its range today. So that's those two are end of day and uh, intraday. This is the same thing, except this requires that a flag be up. In other words, let me go to a different chart. It uh, indicates that the 200 is at the bottom, then the 100, then the uh, 50, and then the 18. That forms a flag. This is the uh, 3 and the 6. So if the I said flag, I meant fan. So if the fan is positive, uh, that cuts the number of uh, stocks down uh, considerably. Let's compare this. 633 and those with a fan up cuts it down to 157. So uh, my thinking here is that we're only looking at stocks that are in an uptrend. All right. Now this is the intraday version of that, and this is the uh, VP of bullish with a five-day window. I didn't limit it to one day, so if you look down this column right here, most of them did happen yesterday. Let me sort on this. You can see that several of these uh, stocks, or not that many, but some had VPA flags within the past five days. That's what this does. Here's the intraday version of that. And uh, here's one right here. Strength seen returning. That happened four days ago. Remember, zero is a crossover day. So you can see that the strength was returning. It happened back here four days ago. Here was another VPA flag. Some of these signals are not flags. I know that's confusing, but the criteria isn't quite met. But it's uh, it's uh, reassuring to see other VPA flags here. And you can see that it's starting to move. And these are just the, um, the opposite uh, bearish VPA flag today. I'm using uh, a reverse combo here. In other words, I'm looking for supply. And uh, here's the intraday version of it, but on a strong day like this. Okay, let's look at this. 127 strong day like this. You're going to see a lot of these stocks that were down and getting bearish flags 
uh, coming up because the market is being propelled higher and there's a lot of bottom fishers in there. Okay, this is the uh, bearish VPA flag today with the fan down. And here's the thing, same thing intraday. So um, let's look at all, let's just, I'm just going to grab one here. Waddell and Reed. You can see the fan is clearly down on this, but there are buyers stepping up. This is coming off an oversold uh, level. This is a relative strength. Uh, it's, uh, it's called a bingo. That uh, was Ian's terminology. And uh, it... Uh, it was is based upon uh, market being oversold based upon the relative strength. So on days like this, you're going to get people jumping into stocks like this. So that uh, that covers the rest of the scorecard views. I went through these quickly, but that gives you a feel for what I'm doing. And uh, if you uh, uh, join the club and start using these scans with Thinkorswim, uh, you'll figure it out very quickly.